<laughs> That's empty. Have you been a hey, bad boy? Uh, apparently so. There's some coal. <laughs> Let me see what's in here. There's really nothing in here but an old Halloween toy. <laughs> what's it doing in a Christmas stocking? <laughs> I mean, hey, Nightmare Before Christmas. Something. Yeah, well, so Jack Skeleton was there. Yeah, I guess so. We were trying to to figure out what can we could put in there. So I don't know. I took this from my son right now as he was playing with it. I was like, hold on, I need something. Took so he's in the other room crying. <laughs> <laughs> Show well, up, Daddy needs something for the video. I was like, hold on, I will give this back to you in 30 minutes, okay? So <laughs> give Daddy 30 minutes. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Zia Comic Weekly. Of course, we are just a few days removed from, uh, I was going to say Halloween. See? Look, confused. From Christmas. Festivus. <laughs> One day from Festivus. For the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start tomorrow with the airing of grievances. That, that's that's going to be the first thing on the list. So <laughs> we've got a lot of grievances to air. I do so. that every year, every day of the year. <laughs> it almost seems like it, man. 2022, we had a lot of grievances, a lot of... A lot of things. I got a long list. <laughs> so buckle up, everybody. If you're sitting with him tomorrow, he's got a lot to get off his chest. Uh, we get ready to nerd out for the next half hour. lot to get to, especially uh, with DC. DC just waited till like this week to just say, hey, let's go ahead and give you guys some news to talk about because Avatar isn't making enough news right now. So, uh, I mean, there's just so much to go over that uh, we might as well get to it and you know, Black Adam is gone. It's Goodbye, not, Black I Adam. know it's not part of James Gunn's DC Universe, but they said they might still make a Black Adam. But it, it, I guess it didn't do as well as they thought at the box office, so money talks. <laughs> yep. I mean, I don't know who's letting more people go, James Gunn or uh, uh, <laughs> the guy from Twitter. So, <laughs> Well, he stepped down. It, is it official? So he did step down, right? Yeah. Okay. Tom from MySpace said he would take the job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. So that means... Uh, and I'm not joking. He really <laughs> he said, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> so we got six more months, and then, yeah, then Twitter will be gone forever, just like MySpace. You're going to so. put your own HTML and Twitter, and it'll, everything will be all jacked up. And <laughs> Oh, man. MySpace had us believing for a second that we knew how to code. <sighs> It really did. A lot of us are like, oh, I'm a computer whiz. I can code. I look, look, I can put sparkly backgrounds or very loud music. <laughs> oh my gosh, you remember that? You go, but it was funny though because especially if you were on campus at the time, and then somebody that was trying to stay quiet, all of a sudden, rage against the machine just started playing really <laughs> loud. <the> name of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but yeah, Black Adam, uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, of course, issued a statement said that. Uh, he had a convo with James Gunn and said that it didn't fit in their universe. And uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens. And like you said, we may see Black Adam, but we may not see The Rock. So, I mean, if The Rock can't save the DC universe, does James Gunn have a hope? I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is when they call in Vin Diesel, everybody. The family. That's, That's what right. they need. They need a family. <laughs> <laughs> family will take care of DC. Family saves DCU. Uh, I don't even know why my wife and I got into this discussion, which was very surprising. Uh, I seem to think that The Rock, just out of spite, will try to figure out how he can now go to Team Marvel. Well, Henry, they already got Henry Cavill looking at uh, things. And, well, he's already jumping in. He's going to be the in the Warhammer mm -hmm. uh, universe. So uh, they, they, those popular guys, they'll always have work. Yeah. Oh, there, there's no... There's no worrying about the work. As I can guess what, guys, as much as there's some storylines that we may like, James Gunn has obviously a different vision. And we're just going to have to trust that vision because, I mean, we love Guardians of the Galaxy. And for the most part, I think a lot of fans didn't even know who the Guardians of the Galaxy were. Yeah, no, not, not well, especially not that iteration of the Guardians because that's not, like I said, that's not even the original Guardians. Those are Those guys came along later on who knew anything about rocket raccoon or Groot? Groot was a villain way, way back in the day <laughs> yeah i um i don't know just you kind of tie in just from like everybody's origin story and like i told you i didn't realize rocket had a girlfriend until yeah. the trailer yeah there's a whole planet of dudes like him <laughs> yeah so i mean we're gonna get ready to find out more but this is also james gunn's i guess farewell from marvel after this guardians of the galaxy then it's 
back. It's time to to see what he could do with DC. Yeah, well, he's already done Suicide Squad with him. So yeah, Suicide I, Squad yeah. Peacemaker looks like he'll be okay. Um, <laughs> you mentioned about uh, Aquaman getting a new character, so. Yeah, Lobo. I mean, Lo- people have been yelling to have Lobo on screen for a long time now. So, and that's that's who Momoa should have played in, in the first place. I mean, he did a decent job as Aquaman, but he's not the Aquaman from the comics. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. DC, you definitely have a lot of people's uh, attention right now. Uh, I was just looking up, and I realized Black Adam is on HBO Max. It just came out right. on HBO Max. Um, looking at early numbers they're saying that uh, although it is the top streamed movie right now doesn't go anywhere close to what the batman when it came out on hbo max yeah well that they spend a lot of money on uh on black adam do plus marketing yeah no i mean they talked about it for like two years (laughs) i mean anywhere the rock went i mean he was promoting another movie and while he was promoting that movie he'd be promoting black adam oh by the way i'm black adam (laughs) <laughs> it's like, hey, guys, I'm going to do another sci-fi movie. But don't forget, Black Adam is coming in 2022. <laughs> uh, it came and went. Yeah, it really did. But uh, I don't know. My hope for The Rock is he will go to Marvel. Obviously, we will see him in another Fast and Furious movie because family. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's an estranged family, right? That's dysfunctional between him and Diesel. So uh, You know, and I'm starting to wonder, too, because thanks to, to – uh, let's see. Uh, Twitch. I don't even know. I'm not even on Twitch. Thanks to TikTok. A lot of people are saying that, uh, you know, was Dwayne The Rock Johnson using Superman to really elevate this movie? I mean, they were really trying their best to get this movie out there that, you know, some people are saying he was just kind of shortcutting just to see how he can make this movie successful. Well, honestly, I they did not write that character to The Rock's uh, strong points. It was a uh, it was a very deadpan character. That's not his type of acting. So it was just really, it felt kind of wooden. It was, it was out of place for me. It, they should have written Black Adam to his strengths. And I think it would have done a lot better. Yeah. And I haven't heard anything about Shazam. If they're keeping the Shazam characters. I mean, that's still, I believe up for debate because Shazam does have a sequel that's in the works. Yeah. Well, it should be coming out pretty soon. Isn't it early next year? Yeah. So it's like, hey, let's release this and you're fired. Yeah. James Gunn does not care. He will cut you. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's the start that I think you and I have been talking about this for months now, that DC needs to do a hard reset and really take from what Marvel's been doing. And I mean, as much as it's like, OK, well, what's going to happen with this? Maybe this is the reset we need to get characters reintroduced and some new characters that we probably don't really hear about i mean that have their own comic book but are probably not the top priority like a batman or a superman maybe we'll see condiment king on the uh on the big screen <laughs> see i mean pete davidson needs a job so <laughs> well, he's he was in suicide squad oh that's right yeah that's right. i forget they he died so i think he can play multiple characters i guess oh uh, sorry spoiler to anybody that hadn't seen suicide squad in that movie came out two years ago, so yeah, it's surprise. on HBO Max. Go watch it this holiday season, okay? <laughs> it's there. <laughs> uh, James Cameron, of course, he's uh, making the headlines, obviously, with his uh, avatar and not doing so well. I mean, it's doing well, but to make $2 billion back, y- yeah, it's going to – good luck, buddy. Yeah, that, that's got to kill his ego because you know he's got a big ego. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm wondering what this means for the uh, future Avatar movies. Did you get a chance to see it yet? I it's probably gonna no, be a while. Man. It, with everybody being out on the holiday break, the theaters have been slammed. And every time I look, the only seat available is like over in the janitor's closet. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just I'm gonna wait. Yeah, no, I think that's gonna be a after the New Year movie to go watch because, like you said, it's, it's packed. Everyone is off on vacation right about now. Uh, James Cameron. Recently did an interview, uh, according to Contact Music, he's looking to reboot The Terminator. Uh, is he going to try to bring <laughs> Arnold back, or is he going to uh, have else in mind? I mean, I hope not. Don't. I mean, I think we're kind of done with Arnold. I mean, I think he's kind of needs to retire that Terminator, but uh, hold on. I got the story right here. It says uh, uh, if he's able to do another Terminator, uh, Term- Terminator, uh, I don't even know what movie that is, uh, Terminator film. He made it try to launch that franchise again. 
Uh, but he says that it would be more about the AI side than the bad robots gone crazy. No, so man, people AI, want to see robots. We want robots. <laughs> but AI has made such an impact these last couple of months from everybody turning their picture AI. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, but when you think Terminator, you're not thinking that. You're thinking Skynet and big killer robots. Yeah. <sighs> Come on, Cameron. I, I think you might be slipping, buddy. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, Cameron apparently wants to reboot the Terminator franchise. Uh, but, I mean, I guess wishes, right? But right now, it doesn't have the hot hand right now as we're hoping for. So anything that he's doing, I mean, it's not it's not pulling in numbers like he would like. Yeah, who would you pick as the next Terminator? Uh, the Rock. No, just... <laughs> <laughs> Batista? <laughs> you know, yeah, Batista's a good one. I mean, I think Batista fits. You know what, though? I've liked Batista in more comedy roles. Comedy yeah. central roles that he's done has been really good. Like Stuber, that is a hilarious movie for people yeah. who have seen that. Yeah, that was good. But, I mean, you don't have to have this big hulking uh, Terminator to be menacing. I don't know. I mean, the, the female they had this in the last one was good. And if you ever watched that TV series, the Sarah Connor Chronicles, when they used um, the girl who played River song from Firefly, mm -hmm. they did it. She did a really good job. So I wouldn't mind seeing them bringing in, you know, something like that as the uh, Terminator. But if they're going to go the AI route, they're going to have to sell me on that one. Yeah, it's going to be one of those that if it doesn't get your attention in the trailer, it may not do so well. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why, like, even Avatar. I mean, as much as Avatar was a highly anticipated film, I think they just needed to give us a little bit more. And maybe that could have pushed more people to go see that movie. I mean, they're probably going to have a strong holiday weekend, but it's not $2 billion worth. Yeah, I mean, how many times can we see them beating the humans <laughs> and keeping them away from their unobtainium? Yeah. I mean, there's... a. Uh... I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting. It's been a while since I've seen a Terminator movie, to be honest. I know they had the whole Sarah Chronicles. They had a few other movies that came out. And it's been tough to kind of keep up with them because it's just like, do we still want Terminator? Like, is that something that we're seeking? I mean, there's so many other concepts that you could do with that robot type movie to get people excited. Yeah, maybe a movie of... I think they would actually do better as a series, maybe like a, a streaming series of how Skynet became self-aware. That would be a good one. And that would scare people, like you said, because the AI stuff lately has been getting crazy. I mean, when you see on social media, everybody has changed their pictures, which later come to find out <laughs> that some people were paying $8 to see what they look like in AI. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Matt, somewhere somebody made a lot of money yep. because we wanted to see what we look like with wings on us and floating. <laughs> like, I could have done that for like, you know, three bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you did me an AI, it, it's probably going to have a cheeseburger, <laughs> probably sitting at the couch, like walking out of McDonald's with a bag. <laughs> there you go. I'm not about to have machine gun rifle arms and. Yeah. <laughs> With wings that fly. Yeah, no, that's, that's not realistic. Really, that is fantasy. <laughs> that really is. But whoever made that app, they sure did make a lot of money getting everybody trying to see what they look like. AI. Yeah, yeah I'm hoping it's just a craze and it's going to die off. Yeah, it, it, it pretty well. I mean, somebody had to make Christmas money, so they sure did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of the holidays, as we get ready for, you know, the holiday season and just a few days away from Christmas Eve, Christmas and of course, you got Festivus and all the other festivities that are going to be coming our way. Uh, so I looked up most loved holiday TV specials. You're probably going to see some of these TV specials. I've mentioned numerous times, and I think ever since I said it, I haven't seen it on TV as much. Home Alone and Home Alone 2 being on TV seems like every day, but yeah. now I'm not seeing it. So <laughs> but, Somebody uh, probably bought the rights up for it. Yeah, they were like, ah, we aired it enough. We're done. So... <laughs> Uh, so they put out a list, okay, the most uh, holiday specials, okay? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh, yeah, you can't go wrong with Rankin Bass. Uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Yeah, I'm on board with that. And then this one, it gets weird, okay? The <laughs> Friends episode, the one with the holiday armadillo. No, so the screen's not frozen. This is just me. <laughs> <Just please. laughs> oh don't worry i'm about to bring you back though because this one 
the South Park episode Christmas Snow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so, I, I, yeah. <laughs> friends, then South Park, you could see they obviously asked a very diverse group of people. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. The Grinch has <laughs> got to be on that list somewhere. Uh, yes, the Grinch is towards the bottom. I mean, you got the Grinch. You got a lot of the TV classics. Uh, Jingle all the know, way. Jingle all the way. <laughs> Sinbad and Arnold together? You can't do better than that. <laughs> That's the movie that we need for Terminator. <laughs> Sinbad and and Arnold to come back and fight Skynet. <laughs> With both of them being Terminators? Uh, uh, there you go. And then just one always telling jokes while the other one wants to fight all the time. <laughs> Something's wrong with his programming. We just <laughs> know, he can't stop being funny. What's going on here? So... Well, he stopped being funny. Trust me, Sinbad stopped being funny. <laughs> oh man. Poor Sinbad, though. Sinbad has been going through it. I know he's on the road to recovery, but he was in a coma for a while. Yeah. Yeah. He it's... was in a bad way. Yeah. So he's it looks like he's getting back. I know he was doing some TV shows for a while. And then of course he just you know, never stops touring with his comedy. And I mean, man, it, it's crazy, though, to see a lot of the, you know, our 90s, our 90s, you know, staples, you know, mm -hmm. getting, getting old and dying off. <laughs> I mean, between them getting old and, you know, I mean, you just look at it like, oh, man, I remember when you were young, man. It's like now I'm starting to feel old. We are, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. <laughs> uh looks like Sylvester Stallone got himself in a little bit of drama, Troy. And it all Ooh. had to do with the meet and greet that TMZ got a hold of. Uh, TMZ is saying that uh, Sylvester Stallone left many fans upset at a recent meet and greet. I did not hear about this. What happened? Yes. Now, apparently he wasn't feeling well, which, of course, if they're not feeling well, I mean, I understand why leaving early, but... Uh, he said he didn't feel well. Many people who had purchased packages ranging from 750 to 1,250 were upset, wow. and they felt they didn't get their money's worth. Wow. I mean, he's in his 70s, but, dude, you sold that. Yeah. Unless you're, you know, on death's bed, you need to suck it up and uh, or refund those people something. Yeah, I was looking right now, and it shows that uh, the company that put this together, they're looking to... I guess make up or refund or offer refunds, whether it's through getting another celebrity to do a meet and greet or to offer the you know money back. But they're scrambling right now to try to figure out how to fix this problem with yeah. Sylvester Stallone. And if he wasn't feeling good, then I feel like this is something they could have called maybe sooner rather than at the moment that you're in line already. Yeah, postpone it or something. Because typically in their contract, they're obligated for X number of hours at these events. Mm -hmm. So if he didn't fulfill that, they can they can go after him and get their money back that they paid him. Yeah. And then in turn, either refund or give them a different meet and greet. You know, which leads me to a question that I have. You know, you've obviously been through many meet and greets. You know, you've got a chance to whether it's Couple. bringing people in uh, just just a few. Right. But has there ever been a meet and greet that you've maybe experienced? You went to go meet somebody at a Comic-Con and it wasn't what you expected. You got there. And you're just kind of like, man, I'm kind of disappointed like it could have been something more magical yes <laughs> yes it's happened a few times uh i really don't want to drop names but yeah no. it, it's it's happened uh, a couple of them are not alive anymore but you know but then i've had other meet and greets where you meet them and they were they were way beyond my expectations they were just crazy amazing to, to sit and talk to mm -hmm. and uh one of them i'll tell you was dick van dyke he went to uh phoenix comic-con and the dude's in his, he was in his nineties at this point. It was a few years back before COVID and they were running that guy around like crazy. His handlers, cause he would do, do photos and he came back into signings and he went to a panel and, the, and they were just running the guy ragged. And he was still the most gracious. I waited. I actually, I waited in line over six hours to, to meet him. Wow. And he was still as gracious. You get, he came up and he would try to talk to you and his handlers were trying to push people through quick. But he was just the most genuine and nice person I had ever met. So I mean, most of most of them are pretty good, but every once in a while it just takes one dude to to really mess it up for you. Yeah, no, and and I, I've seen that at times through meet and greet where it's like you're getting ready for this experience and then you get there and it's just kind of like they're just, you know, herding cattle. Just thank you. Yeah. And you're like, but 
I mean, I don't know what else. They're not about to sit there and talk to you 15 minutes about the movie that they played back in the 19, uh, 1980s. Yeah, but, I mean, you, but you can at least make eye contact. Yeah, that <laughs> is a big one. Uh, yeah. I think the same could be said about uh, interviews that, you know, we've done over the years. I mean, like you said, not to to throw anybody out there, but there's been some that we've interviewed, some some high profile names that you're just kind of like, man, you are just not filling this, are you? Then why are we even here? Like, yeah, they're just fulfilling like, the contract. Yeah, they literally are. And then you ask them a question and it's met with a backhanded comment like, okay man like they give you the real short answers yeah Mm -hmm. yeah okay and then you get the ones that you least expect to just be on the phone with you or you know in the studio with you for 45 minutes and you're just kind of like okay like i when you get that message in your ear whenever you're interviewing somebody that says okay you need to get off the interview now or they're interrupting (laughs) constantly it's uh, 3 p.m you're a morning show yeah it's like (laughs) hey (laughs) <laughs> he needs to eat lunch now. Can you please get off the phone? I mean, those are the ones that I think always stand out. I mean, there's been quite a few with that, but I mean, I would think it's the same for the meet and greet. If you're going to, you know, show up, I mean, like you said, the the small things, because I mean, to pay $1,250 to meet Sylvester Stallone, which Sylvester Stallone's an icon, oh, but yeah. you'd be in that line and then find out, oh, and you got to think how many people flew just to meet him. Yeah, I mean, they can't get that back. Even if they do try to reschedule for somebody else, yeah. they're out I mean, all that money because they have to redo it. Yeah, it's definitely got them in a bit of a mess. And, I mean, I understand the not feeling well thing, but like you said, there comes a point where it's like, okay, if you can at least fulfill your hours of the contract, but to just up and leave, I mean, that's... And, and I'm hoping it's just he was under the weather and it's not some underlying thing that he's trying to keep hush-hush like yeah. Chadwick Bozeman. Oh, man, I mean, so, it's... Yeah, I mean, stuff like that. That's the first thing I think is like, oh, is he, you know, something else going on? They're just trying to slide it under the rug. Yeah, I mean, and his TV show that he has on Paramount Plus just got picked up for another season. So, oh, have you watched Tulsa King? I want to see that. That's uh, amazing that's show. One dude. of the ones we want to we want to watch uh, over the break is that one. Uh, we got a couple other Paramount Plus is actually coming through clutch, man. I mean, they're gonna yeah. have Top Gun on there, I believe, this weekend. Yeah, Mavericks coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if Yellowstone's on the plus. Yeah. yeah. The older seasons might be. I don't think the new season's on there. Uh, if it's not, still, you got five other seasons of Yellowstone. Plus, yeah. Tulsa King is just killing it. No, Tulsa, Tulsa King is one that we want to watch just because it, I mean, it's getting these amazing reviews. It's good. It, I, I'll vouch for it. It's really good. <laughs> uh, one show that I actually cannot believe that I got caught up in, and it's not let them, is it Cake? Okay. <laughs> Holiday I, baking challenge? No, I, I completed those. Okay. <laughs> it's done. They're they're already moving on to New Year. They're already done with the Christmas challenge. Uh one that was trending a lot, uh, White Lotus on HBO. I uh I yeah, I think they have a second season already. Uh yeah, I watched the first season and it's it's different. Yeah. It's like I, a little murder mystery each season with it, there's one character that kind of ties each one of them together. And I think it's Stifler's mom. <laughs> it's Tiffler's. You know what's funny? I can never remember her name. I mean, no. I see her in all these commercials, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to learn her name because I can't just say, oh, hey, Stifler's mom is in this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she gets that a lot. She has to. I mean, it's. I mean, it has to be. Uh, they should put it in parentheses in the credits <laughs> beside her name. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna look. I'm googling it right now because how do we not know this? person's name and she's like literally everywhere on tv right now between yeah. that between old navy commercials and any other commercials she can have it's just everywhere yeah she's uh like i said she's done she's done quite a bit of other stuff but that's what everybody remembers her for <laughs> i type stifler's mom and it says <laughs> hit right away stifler's mom actress but it gives me a real name jennifer coolidge See, I'll never remember that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Stifler's uh, mom and MILF. That's the only two <laughs> ways I remember. <laughs> uh, no, White Lotus, uh, the, this last season just wrapped up, uh, season two. It, this is, once again, one of those shows where my wife is watching. I walk by. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. And then you just kind of like, so wait, why are they doing that? What's going on? Yeah. And then next thing you know, you're more excited to see the show season finale than she is. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's not one of those shows that's just overly amazing, but it, it's enough that catches you. 
and the, the storytelling part of it, the way they tell it from all the different characters. Uh, and, and you never know until like the end exactly who is the culprit. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just great. It, it's one of those shows that like, yeah, that's a good show. Yeah. But I wouldn't put it on my top 10 list. No, I mean, but, you know, I, I know a lot of people saying, you know, that was probably one. I mean, say what you want about the finale. I know it was definitely quite in, causing quite a buzz as far as what happened in the last episode. But, I mean, it definitely had it's one of those talking points that a lot of people are just like, did you watch it? Did you see what happened? <laughs> Which is very rare because I think a lot of us these days are just so used to the hey, it's on Netflix. I'm going to stream the whole series just like a, a Stranger Things. We'll be done with Stranger Things by the weekend. Whereas this one, it's been a while. I mean, since Walking Dead, I'll even say. Whereas where it's like, hey, did you see this last week's episode? Oh, can you imagine what's going to happen? We got to wait till Sunday. I mean, it's been a while since we've seen uh, shows like that. And, and like I said, Walking Dead, I think, was one of the last ones that was doing that. Well, speaking of that, you saw Netflix is talking about getting away from that, releasing the whole season at once. I mean, it's... Will there be no more marathon binges? Because uh, they're seeing all these other services that are keeping their customer base because they keep wanting to come back each week. Mm -hmm. And Netflix has seen people just come binge cancel. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, like if a, a show like stranger things, which is one of the top ones or squid games, that's going to have its sequel. I mean, you're like, okay, once I find out squid games, I get that trial period and then cancel yeah. and be gone. Like, no, they, they they noticed that and they took a big hit. So they're they're talking about going away with that uh, dropping in all at once. <laughs> I'm also seeing about Netflix doing um, live programming. I mean, some of the other streaming services have started adding live programming. Um, you see, like Ooh. with Paramount Plus, you know, incorporating the NFL, you know, Peacock does the same thing with their premium events with, you know, other sports, uh, Amazon as well. I mean, Netflix and, you know. I think even HBO Max need to jump on that appointment setting to where you're going to watch this episode at this time on this day. Yeah, I, I think they're going to whatever makes them the most money is where they're going to gravitate to. And you're yeah. going to see all the streaming services follow. Uh, and I'm OK with that. If y'all just quit raising the price of Netflix, <laughs> stop raising the price, man. Like at this point, I'm paying Netflix what I was paying for in cable. Yeah, I, I knew that was going to happen. It's just going to be a la carte now instead of yeah. on cable. Yeah, it, it really is. And uh, I'm like, can we go back to the where I just you send me the DVD and I'll send it back when I'm done? <laughs> I've been streaming service jumping, too. I'm like, OK, we're going to get Paramount and we'll watch this. When that's done, we'll cut it and then we'll go over and get this. And the only yeah. reason I had A&E was for Better Call Saul. It ended cut. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's kind of I mean, and I think right now HBO Max. This White Lotus came out and they barely saved because I was this close to <laughs> being done with HBO Max and then just you know, hovering over the cancel button. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, wait, we'll we'll watch this. And then next thing you know, it's like Black Adams on there. Oh, okay, we'll 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 keep you around for a few. Yeah, that just saves them for three hours though. <laughs> yeah, three hours, and I'll tell you right now, the main one I think I've been is on um Netflix. Netflix has really been the one, or Hulu. I mean, Hulu has the holiday movies and everything right now. So yeah, all that original programming on Netflix is what's saving them. Yeah. So they need to keep up the, the original programming. Otherwise, I, I don't know. We'll just see when that happens. I did see something cause I'm a, a wrestling junkie that um, the Netflix is looking to acquire the streaming rights to WWE to take it away from Fox. Ooh, yeah. That that's huge. So that's where that live, programming would come for is to okay you can go and see this <sighs> if netflix can acquire that from fox i mean it won't be on you know the fox channel anymore it'll be netflix so now you got your i mean they already have a deal with peacock for their premium events but if netflix has it i mean you're talking about that could be their saving grace right there it really could so see <laughs> the rock saves everybody <laughs> in a roundabout way hey, you can, a weird way. Maker or guardians of the galaxy there are wrestlers there i mean i hate to say it man in the next five years i mean every movie is gonna have a guy that was a former wrestler i mean batista the rock john cena uh, john cena um i believe the rock's cousin is getting ready to make his way over to movies like you just got all these guys that are gonna start making their way into hollywood i mean it's only a matter of time. Uh, yeah. So we'll, 
We'll have to wait and see. Uh, <laughs> before we get out of here, uh, holidays are coming up. Uh, what what do we got going on at Zia Comics? Uh, just normal operations, sales. It's just been crazy. Everybody's off work, so it's just been nonstop in the store trying to keep up with uh, inventory stuff is selling out so quick and it's taking so long to get things back. And, uh, we're just, like I said, we're just trying to keep up with the flow of people. No, uh, well, it's a, <laughs> it's a good problem to have. Are you guys, uh, are you guys closed, uh, this weekend? We, we close two days a year, Thanksgiving and Christmas. That's it. Other than so, that, we'll be open. <laughs> all righty. So y'all heard it. So make sure y'all go see them before, uh, before the holiday season and uh, get those last minute gifts and, uh, and uh, go see, go see Santa. You, you were, you had Santa out there this past Sunday, right? Yeah, we were there Sunday and then we drove down to El Paso for their winter fest with the Santa suit. Nice. And uh, I hate to say it, but El Paso is doing it better than we are. <laughs> winter fest was amazing. Oh man. So they're, uh, they're, they're on it for the holiday season. So yeah, but, uh, that's your wake up call. Cruces city. Yeah, we we need we need a little we need a little bit more pizzazz when it comes to, yeah, to the holidays. Do something. <laughs> By the way, Troy, I'm just glad I didn't have to do this episode today from from a truck stop. I think it would have been a better episode, Love Truck Stop. You can set I up mean, right outside the showers. <laughs> no, that, <laughs> then it would probably be a not safe for work episode if that was the case. <laughs> you could been right by the coolers. You just reach over, open it up, and get yourself a Mountain Dew. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll pay for this at the end. It's okay? on my tab. On my tab. <laughs> <laughs> the cashier just like, this isn't a bar, sir. This is a truck stop. Uh, can't talk. I'm streaming. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Don't cut my internet, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. If they want to keep up with you guys on the socials, how can they follow you? Uh, like I said, we're all over the interwebs, man. We got the Facebook, uh, Twitter until, well, uh, Elon's gone now, so it might be going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got the Instagram, the gram, the Insta, whatever you want to call it. Old people call it Instagram. Uh, got the YouTube. Oh, I'm off screen. YouTube. And last but not least, the Tiki Taki. By the way, my son is ready. He says, Hey, it's already been 30 minutes. <laughs> Pulling on the sleeve. Uh. <laughs> so you need to give me this back. So, <laughs> uh, guys, of course you can follow me, uh, on Instagram, uh, Joey on the FM. Don't forget hot one Oh three's big show on Facebook, big show FM, as well as uh, Joey on the FM on TikTok. So keep up with us. And, uh, next week, of course, we'll have our, uh, wrap up of 2022. We'll get to be able to talk about all the great things. Give us time to realize what show happened in 2022 because so much happened that we'll be like, wait, that was this year or was it last year? So it's all a I blur. Mean, it, it really was. 2022 had a lot of stuff and we don't even remember if it was this year. So, <laughs> oh man, guys, this has been another edition of Zia Comic Weekly. We'll catch you next week. Later nerds. <laughs>